All right, let's talk a little bit about the differences between cupping and junction joint failure. Cupping is when the belt's shaped like that U, just like you saw in that previous photo. It doesn't touch the returnals properly. Belts that have junction joint failure will make contact on the outside of the roll here and here, and it'll also make contact here in the center. So you see those little gaps of light coming through at point one and point two? If you see that at your conveyor, or you see uneven wear across the roll, that's an indication that you've got a belt that's got junction joint failure, and it'll also be difficult to track that belt. Now, over time, you can get junction joint failure that can look as severe as the photo that you see on your right. What happens is you're actually damaging the top cover, the bottom cover, and the carcass, but you're only damaging it in those idler junction areas. Now, junction joint failure can come from in the incorrect type of idlers, but it's most commonly caused by the transition distance being too short. The transition distance is the distance that it takes the belt to go from the flat tail pulley to the first fully troughed idler, typically a 35 degree roller. That process of transitioning the belt from flat to trough, it puts a lot of stress on the belt. What happens is the outside edges of the belt are being pulled with greater force than the center third of the belt. And that puts that stress in this area right here of the belt. Now that stress isn't a problem if it's allowed to happen over enough distance. So the problem isn't transitioning the belt from flat to 35 degrees. The problem is not giving that belt enough real estate to transition from flat to 35 degrees. Now, a lot of different things will have an effect on what that distance needs to be. But in some cases, we'll often recommend that that transition distance be about 2.3, 2.3 times the width of the belt. Now, that can be pretty long in some cases. In, in again, tension, type of belt, um, top cover thickness, all that stuff will have an effect on that 2.3 times the belt width. In many cases, it can be shorter than that. In most cases, it won't be any longer than that. Uh, but that's kind of sometimes a general rule of thumb. When we see a belt's transition distance is less than twice the width of the belt, that's when we start looking for junction joint failure. So there's a pretty good example of a transition distance that's just simply too short. This is at a pulp and paper facility. Uh, they're conveying wood chips at this plant. And it's an older design plant, like probably some of you are dealing with um, or working with. And um, you know, back in the day, nobody realized what would happen to a belt if you transitioned it in too short of a distance. Um, and that's what you're seeing with this. Some of the older designs are sometimes designs um, that just didn't want to invest in the added structure uh, to give enough real estate for those belts to transition properly can be susceptible to that junction joint failure. Here's how you identify junction joint failure and how it, it's noticeably different than a cupped belt. This is a belt that's cupped. You can see the, a little bit of a curvature to the belt and you can see contact on one side of the belt. Now on the right side, it's actually mistracked uh, so severely that it's not making contact with that roller, not wearing the paint off that roller. But what you can see here clearly is that there's worn, the, the roller is worn on one side and not the middle. That's a cupped belt. When a belt has junction joint failure, 
you'll see that wear on the outside, but you'll also see the center of that return roll wear as much, if not more, than the outsides of the roll. So if you look at this roll, you see kind of this curvature, right? That's because the belt's shaped like that and it's putting force on the outside and the center and leaving that gap right there or less pressure. So look at your return rolls. If they're worn or the paint's wearing off of them unevenly, if it's just on the outsides, the belt's cupped. If it's on the outsides and the center, that's junction joint failure.